What's going on guys? Keith here, Two Guys How To. Uh, another day, another thing to fix, right? So uh, anyway, I've been just stewing in my head of what I need to get to next, and I decided I was gonna come out and get to this tub buggy uh, that I did a current video on, abandoned for 12 and years. Uh, abandoned for 12 and 12 years and to see if it would start so uh, I went ahead and I went all the way down to almost uh, deep into Virginia a couple hours maybe almost three hours from here got this thing rescued it brought it back I uh, got it started on the one video that I had uh, I haven't even washed it or anything I did keep it covered up and I've kept all the water out of it so uh, today we're just gonna look into the carburetor uh, system right here it's a little teeny uh, one barrel. It's probably like maybe a 28 picked or something like that. It's probably a 1300 cc. I think this was a single port once I kind of looked it over just by looking at it right now. Um, it does have dual, dual ports coming in. So, uh, you know, I'm not really sure what year it is. I think this one's like a 60 something, 63. So uh, I'll figure a little bit more out. But first and foremost, let's just get it running. Um, and then we can figure out if it's worth keeping or what we want to do if we want to swap the motor. So today we're going to take the carburetor off. Now it's looking at the linkage up underneath the carburetor. And it looks like the line's been kind of spliced together and I've got some other videos where we did that on a van. Uh, we've actually fixed the frayed part, shoved it back in, but if that didn't work, you can just take a piece of cable and clamp it onto your piece of cable and that gives you enough length to go up in there and work. So I reach my hand back inside here and you've got the throttle cable that actually comes through the back of this, these, these fan tins right here. There's a little tube, like a, almost looks like a pen tube. You wanna make sure that that's loose. And if I pull the cable, we can see it, the linkage is moving. So let's go ahead and get this carburetor off with a 13 millimeter wrench and get it up here on the bench and actually physically uh, check it out and clean it. So uh, let's get on down here and get busy with this thing. And I've got my 13 millimeter wrench, and I don't know if you guys can see, but you got a bolt right down up under here. There's one in the front and one way in the back. So what I did is I took this distributor cap off, and you got your, uh, and just tuck it up out of the way somewhere. Let's go ahead and get it up out of the way got a little uh, your condenser wire that goes right there so uh, let me lower it down so you guys can really see what I've got going on and you can see the carb really good now uh, yeah, you should be able to see the carb really good now. You got a bolt in the front, you got a bolt in the back. Sometimes the stud, the whole stud will come out. So the one I had and did is I just took the distributor cap completely off. Take it off, tuck it up out of the way. Leave the button there, leave your dust shield there. All that's good to go. You got another fuel line that's coming out from the fuel pump uh, and going up to the carb. We're gonna have to remove that. There's a stud way in the back and I already took it out but it's a, a stud that screws in. You can uh, Loctite this in the carb later if you want to do that and just heavily clean it up so it screws back in. But I just went in right up and through here. I pulled this wire, the condenser wire out and you got to reach way up in there. It's not real bad. If you clean it, the better you clean it, uh, it'll come out easier. And mine came out on the stud, the nut came out on the stud. So let's go ahead and remove this front one here. And everything on this this vehicle's old. I didn't spray anything with WD-40 yet. I'm just for a uh, uh, PB blaster. I watched the PB blaster. It will eat up the rubber on this diaphragm and different things. So if anything, I'd probably use a little bit of PB or just use some WD-40. So let's go ahead and just get this other half inch nut off of here. And then this carb should lift up off here once we take off the fuel line and we've got that condenser wire so let's just go ahead and or uh, your this is like a fuel regulator wire in case something catch on fire that thing clicks back and forth in there let's just go ahead and take that off and let's disconnect this fuel line here
And I'm actually gonna undo the bottom one because I'm gonna redo that later. I'm gonna put all new fuel lines on this. And then there's one more up here if you wanna just loosen it, but the carp's ready, ready to come off right now. And we can go ahead and undo this throttle cable that's right up in here. And I forgot to do that because I was showing you guys before it was locked up, but I reached back up inside there and pulled it. It was that little tube right in there that was locked up. Let's see if I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Kind of looks like a metal pin to me. Metal little pin. You can see it right up in there, in that hole right there where the cable goes through. See it right in there. And you can see it starting to move right above where my finger is. Let me see if I can get even closer on you. you. See that round little hole with the cable. So let's just go ahead and undo this throttle cable here and the carb will pop right off now that we got our fuel lines once we disconnect this fuel line right here. Be sweet. Okay, so this is an eight millimeter screw here on this little 28 or 32 uh, carburetors. And you've got, uh, the cable comes up through this little pellet in the middle. So I'm gonna hold that pellet, and grab it and hold it tight. And then undo this eight mil here. And you got that distributor cap out of the way there. It's kind of hard to keep it up out of there. Let's see if we can just set it right there. And you don't have to take this all the way out, just loosen it up pretty good. And if you don't use this, when you turn it, this cable's gonna end up twisting up and it's gonna bind up and actually ruin your throttle cable. You have to straighten it back out. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and see if we can get this fuel line off of here gently if it won't come off. Once again, I'm just gonna use those needle nose. Just use those needle nose and kind of go back and forth. This fuel line's so old, you can see it's frayed right there. You can see it's just frayed up and beat up. So we're good to go. I think this carb's ready to come up off of here. And uh, let's try it. We do have a distributor wire that's right there if we feed this fuel line back through it or take that top fuel line off, then the distributor wire shouldn't be in the way. Let's see if we can just get it out right now. Get those out of the way, and this carb should just lift right up off of here. And it looks like we've got one more electric choke wire right there that I forgot. Let's go ahead and just take that off. and set that over here to where we know that that's the one that goes there and the other one goes to that shut off on the carburetor, the little actuator. So let's just go ahead and get our cover cap back on here, keep some debris out and let's put a shop rag right down in there. Just before, make sure nothing falls in there. And now you can really see that tube that goes through the these tins on the back, the fan motor. And that's where your throttle cable comes out and you can see that that tube just kind of moves so if you've got something sitting around it's kind of oblonged here and flared so it doesn't pull back through but if your throttle cable doesn't move try this sometimes that tube gets bind up or you might get some stuff up rust up inside there and you can see it's good to go now i was going to swap the cable but i'm not going to do it today so we've got the carb now let's go ahead and just put this up on the workbench and get it right in our tray all right, so we've got the carb up on the table now or whatever work area. Let's go ahead and take this air filter off, set it to the side. It definitely needs a new one, but uh, it's good for protecting the bugs. At the, at the age of this unit, I'm not surprised that it does need something. And let's just go ahead and take off this other clamp here to this fuel line. Just go ahead and get that thing off of there. We don't need it, it's old, it's brittle. That's where our leaks are gonna be. I'm gonna save the clamps if they're reusable. If not, I'm gonna toss them, recycle them. So let's see if we can just get this fuel line up off of here. Once again, grab those needle nose and be real gentle. It should break free. Boom. So we're good. Now we can just look at the schematics of it. Uh, you do have a gasket under here. I'm not sure if I have one of those in the garage or not, so I'm gonna leave that as much intact as I can. If not, I can always cut one with the gasket maker. And I'm just gonna kinda look over the linkage and see how everything's set, how it looks, how the accelerator pump, 
Now, if you take this accelerator pump off, chances are that gasket's gonna be bad unless you've got a rebuild kit. I wouldn't mess with it. Today, we're gonna try to not mess with it. And we're gonna just take this top, top bowl off and see if we can get it that way. But all in all, everything is completely here. Uh, it does have this uh, top cap that's for the air filter. You could probably leave that on. Leave this other linkage on here. Don't mess with the butterfly linkage at all down inside there. And let's just go ahead and uh, actually, we've got to take this off in order to get that top cap. So let's take this. Mine has an air filter. Yours might be different. This thing's just kind of dune buggied out. So uh, anything kind of goes. You can see the clamp system it had. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm going to spray a little bit of this with that carb clean. Got that CRC non chlorinated carb clean. Just around, around where those bolts are. And just kind of hit it with that toothbrush. This thing's so beat up. You can see it really coming clean now. I can actually read the writing and get numbers off of this thing. And it looks like it's a, a total German. Yep, it's a German carb. So uh, as we keep cleaning this out, we're gonna find out what number this thing is. I believe it's gonna be a 28. And there it is right on the side of the bowl. So we'll go ahead and spray that up a little bit. Just get it a little bit wet. And see if we can just eat it up with that toothbrush. I save these old toothbrushes. I never throw them out. And I'm actually surprised it's a, it's a 34. So this motor might be a 1600, I'm hoping. But you can see right there. Solex 34 PICT-3, made in Germany. So we're good. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna make note of these different set screws that are on here. I'm not even gonna mess with those today. We're just gonna open this bowl up and see what's down in here. And then I'll just take it back off to do a full rebuild later. But I'm just curious if it will run after sitting for 12 years without putting that much money into it. So we're going to go ahead and just take these top bolts off of this carburetor. That one's actually a little loose. And I'm using a flathead that fits these, these screws perfectly. They're like brass screws. So uh, you don't want to strip them out. Let's just take this off and let's physically look inside and see what's going on. And that's going to be our float bowl down in there and the floats in there and I want to see the float. I want to get to the needles and the jets. Everything else I'm not going to mess with. I'm just going to tap on it lightly. See if we can get that seal to break. If not, I might have another rebuild kit for one of these. So we got one more bolt over here, and then we'll tap on it again, see if we can get it to officially come up out of here. One more clean before I officially pop the top so we don't get any more stuff down in there. Let's check it one time here. And I'm just kind of examining everything to make sure it'll come off without doing a lot of rebuild. Let's take this spring off. I'm just gonna go ahead and set that spring down to the side. That's your linkage spring for your choke and your fast idle. So boom, I think everything's off that I like to see off. Five bolts total, five screws total. And let's just go up under here, slightly tap it, and it should just come up off of here. You want to be careful because we don't have that cart, we don't have that, that gasket. So I'm liking it, you can see it. There's your main gas and your needle that comes in. 
feels like it's pretty good. I'm actually surprised how clean it is inside here. You can see I'm sitting for 12 years. It's crazy. So uh, there is a little bit of rust down on the butterfly down in there, which is expected. That's gonna give us a little bit of an issue. But maybe I can open that up before I have to order new parts and spray down in there and hit it with that brush. See if we can get that rust off of there. Even vinegar, if I let vinegar sit and you hit it with that brush, it'll come off. So yeah, it's 100% it's better already. Just be careful of that gasket up top. Let's get a little bit more of that rust out of there. Let's just hose that out, leaving that gasket intact. A little bit more right in here. And I sprayed everything probably about a month ago. I went and sprayed everything with WD-40, all the butterflies, everything on this. So let's see if we can get that to go back. It looks pretty good. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So uh, we're gonna have to pull this gasket off gently in order to get to that float. I like it, I think it's, uh, the float seems to be okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray down in there. And you can see you've got your jets right there. There's one there. And if that's pulling up onto here, onto your needle right here, drop, this is dropping down. The float's actually moving that up and down. Let's go ahead and just run some, some spray through there. And then we'll hit that, it should come out. There we go. We can hit up into those two little holes right there too. Now watch, watch your eyes when you do that. So we got good flow through there. I'm gonna fill this whole thing up with this carp spray and see if I can get it to drop down and drip out. Yeah, and it's not getting hemmed up. We got good, nice action on that. Got good flow now through there. I like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just lightly spray that off and hit it with that toothbrush. Clean up inside there again, where that needle is. That's good to go. I'm liking it. It looks like there's one more jet right up through here. If you look at it right there. So let's go ahead and hit that. That's your main there. That one's good to go. So let me see if I can show you guys. Whoops. Yeah, she's good. Everything's good. I'm liking that. Everything's good. So I'm just going to spray that and set that to the side and let it dry. Let's go back into this main carb right here. And let's just go ahead and get this thing, fill up the bowl, have it upside down. I don't see too much stuff down in the bowl. And you can see it's coming up out of that top. There's two holes down there. Those seem to be open. There's one right here. in our main jet. Here's any hole that you see, just go ahead and juice it up.
I am gonna take out that main jet right there just to have a peek down in there. It's a little tight, that one's gonna need some spray on it. I'm actually gonna try to start it without it. And just take my speaker wire, I got this strip speaker wire. I'm gonna run down inside there and make sure it's open and clean. Spray a little bit of spray down in there. Oh yeah, we're good. We don't need to take it out. I'm not gonna take it out. It's not broke, don't fix it. Go ahead and hit this upside down one more time. The jets are spraying now, you can see them really good. There's one, there's two. That one sprays down in the main, that one's good. And I'm actually gonna open this butterfly. And there's one tube at the tip right here, that little horseshoe tube. And I'm gonna see if we can get some spray into there. And it's 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 blasting it's blasting down in there, and I'm gonna hit that main jet. There's a main one right down in there, that middle jet. And I'm gonna turn it away from the camera and just hit it hard. Good, good. I'm liking it. I'm gonna go ahead and run that wire down in there one more time and just pull it up and down a few times there good we're good I'm ready to put this thing back together I'm ready and then I'll clean it up a little bit more after I put it all back together the same way Just dab this gasket off here, clean it. Let's put this thing right back together the way it was when we took it apart. And I'm just gonna snug these bolts down. I'm not gonna tighten them yet. I'm going to get them all down and seated, and then I'm going to do a crisscross pattern. Get them all seated nice. Make sure this thing is solid. All right, so I'm going to start tightening on this corner here. Snug it up a little bit. I'm going to go over to this one. Snug it up a little bit, go to this corner, to this corner, and the last corner here. Looks pretty good. I'm just going to double check all of them. that linkage spring back up. I left it on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset this thing back to the top. Just like that. And everything should should work right and flow right.
gloves are about had it, but uh, let's go ahead and, and just double check all this, make sure the accelerator pump's working. And it's working, you can see it moving there. So we're good. Let's get it back on the vehicle and see if she starts. All right, so we got the car back on and I'm just looking over these fuel lines. These fuel lines are just junk. We had one that went up to the top of the carb and one that went to the top part of this uh, fuel pump here. The other one out of the side of the fuel pump in the back runs over down to the gas line. So I went ahead and put an inline fuel filter there just to filter anything if I use the gas tank today. If not, I'm actually gonna pull this off and run my own gas little mini gas tank in there today I think is what I'm gonna do and just gravity feed it down in there into this pump to see if the pumps even working um, alternator seems a little tight but the motor does spin I know it starts so I'm gonna just go ahead and see if this one line here that I found in the garage will work of course it's just not long enough and I'd hate to reuse the old one the old one looks like it had a bunch of just junk in it and uh, that's just going to go ahead and carb, clog our carb again. And you can see up in there, all that came from back there at the, the brake line fitting. It looks like a brake line, but it's actually fuel fuel line way back up underneath there that ran into this where I put the filter. So I'd really hate to reuse any of this. I might just have to run up to the store and get some quarter inch line. I'm actually just going to use what we've got. And I got these uh, fuel injection clamps here. I'm just going to use the 5 16 line, tighten it down, see if we can get a good bite with it. If not, then uh, I'll run up to the store and get some quarter. I know they normally deliver to me, but I don't think they got delivery drivers today. So let's just see how tight this gets here real quick. Pretty tight right there, so let's let's try it. Let's see if it works. I don't know. It looks a little little too big. But let's see, let's see if it seems to be moving around. I mean, not moving around, looks pretty good. I can reroute it later. Most important is the, this other line here where the fuel filter goes, cause that's how we're gonna feed it. Let's see if we can get one more fuel injection clamp on there. and then we'll be ready to start this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get this bundled back up with the new fuel filter in place and everything else to where I can get to it easy and, 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 and replace things easy. I'll change these hoses out. I'm not gonna mess with it today, but uh, I am gonna put the right size hoses on just to make sure down the line. These things rumble a lot and they'll start leaking. It'll get hot and the, the piping will get messed up. So let's just go ahead and get this buckled up here. Everything going. I'm going to get my gas can ready. and Let's see if we can, uh, we can feed it down through here. Unless I look at the front gas tank and I see if that gas tank looks clean enough, then I'll, I'll fill up up there and see if it'll prime it back up to here. But I think I'm just going to run a, a dummy gas tank just back to here and gravity feed it in so we can get this thing started and um, you know, and see how she runs, you know, see if we can pump some gas in it, make sure everything's squirting right, and some fresh gas, and let's see what she does. All right, you guys can see, here's those new fuel lines. I got one coming from the top of the fuel pump, goes back to the carburetor back there. I went ahead and cleaned the air filter, tapped it out, and we got another fuel line right back to the back. It goes into the fuel pump, up into this, uh, fuel filter that normally would run back to this. Looks like they almost got a brake line. That's going up to the tank. All right, so uh, what I did is I just have that fuel filter coming up and sticking out of the top here behind this tag and I got a little funnel. I'm not gonna use a tank, I'm just gonna fill this up and just get some 
gas straight down into that filter and you can see it it's filling it up so let's go ahead and put a little bit more I see the gas down in there. I'm actually gonna put a Spitzworth right into this, right into the, the carburetor itself. Just to make sure we got fire, I put the distributor cap back on. These lines should work, we'll see. Cross her fingers and uh, see if she fires up. Put a battery in here. I'm gonna hook up the ground side to it now. Should be tight enough connection. Let's see if she let's see if she fires up. All right, I went ahead and turned it off. Let's go ahead and just put a little bit more gas. Let's see if that fuel pump's actually running. I think the fuel pump is working. And let's see if she runs. I like it, I like it. So I'm I'm uh, I'm ecstatic now. I'm good to go, man. Got some oil burning off and things that have been sitting around here, uh, just caked on it. And then the dust I covered up the car because there's just so much dust coming off the motor. It's uh, so much power now sucking it down. It's gonna suck it down into that intake. But uh, we're good, man. Uh, uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, this thing was abandoned 12 years. Check out the other video when I when I brought it back from uh, uh, way down in Virginia. And I go all over the place to get these things, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, Jersey, New York. I was in Philly a couple weeks back and brought this other blue tub buggy that we'll be having videos of. But I appreciate you guys tuning in to check this out. This is part two of this thing lives again. This thing will have life again. Um, I'm, I'm going to end up keeping this one. It, it's a little softer plastic than the other one that I got out of Jersey. But it's a totally different style than the one from Jersey. So uh, I just keep collecting these things and I flip them if I want. But this one, this one's kind of brings a little bit of sentimental value to me just being 12 years. I went down, picked it up. It's just been neglected, sitting out, and it's just the seats are gone. But I did got a, got a nice set of race seats up uh, from a guy off of Facebook for like 40 bucks or something for the pair. And he threw in a bunch of these other braces to make a back seat and other stuff that he had. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy. This thing runs, you guys are checking it out. Hopefully it gives you incentive to go and get your vehicle. If you see one, just double check it. Watch that first video. If you, have, if you go and look at one, make sure that, uh, that, that the, the motor spins here. And it, it seems like it's impossible to spin it, but if you spin this pulley, this main crank, it should move. If that thing moves, the chances are that motor's gonna be good. It's gonna, you can get it running. If that thing's frozen up, like the one I got out of Jurors, uh, I'm gonna throw another 1300 in that, but that, that motor's just seized up. If it spins, go ahead, man. Roll the dice, gamble, beat them down a little bit, and uh, get it get it home and then start messing with it. Check out some of my videos, some other videos of people getting things running. Uh, we've got some on the points on how to, how to uh, set the points and gap the points. Um, and get get new set net a, new set of points and condenser. Always replacing the set. 
get it running, just different things. If you got a message or you need something, man, just hit me up. I'll respond back if I know it. I'll respond back of what I know. If I don't know it, I'll let you know, and then I'll ask around and see if I can find the answer for you. So uh, again, Keith, two guys out too. Appreciate you checking out part two of this abandoned uh, sand buggy, uh, abandoned for 12 years, and I'm gonna get into it. I'm gonna actually button this back up and double check the front gas tank maybe on the next video. I don't know if I have time tonight or not, but I'm gonna uncover this thing thoroughly, and you can see it there. Um, it's red, white, and blue. It's a little covered up in the front. But I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Check out part three of this. I'm going to check the gas tank. And I got another video on uh, vinegar and how it eats the uh, rust out of there. So um, hopefully I don't need to do that on this one. If I do, I'm going to pull the tank. I'm going to vinegar the tank for a day or two, a couple days, swish it around, pressure wash it, let it air dry, install it back in, and reroute those fuel lines back to that new fuel filter. That way I know no dirt, no debris is going to get in here uh, no matter what I do to the front. It can't get past that fuel filter. So until next time, I'm Keith, two guys, how to. Check out the other videos thanks for checking it out hit me up subscribe man that way you can keep informed of what's upcoming and i'll subscribe back to you and vice versa and we'll just uh, do the social network thing out so i'm out of here peace later all right let's start it Man, I'm digging that. I'm digging it. What's up, Iggy? Talk to him before I shut the video down. Oh, yeah. Yep. You're not a pig, you're a lawyer. He's not a pig, he's a lawyer. Peace. I'm not a pig, I'm a lawyer. <laughs>